and we're done. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Corey Center. I am the innovator here to make the world better. I do that by bringing teams of leaders and experts together to turn, revolution, to turn great ideas into revolutionary solutions for their industries. And I'm here with my three favorite leaders today, Linda Patton, Terry Ann Richards, and Tony Thayer. And we are talking about one of those topics that is too often missed in leadership, but is so crucial for being able to lead. And that is taking care of you. Yes, we are talking about self-care today. So let's kick it off. Tony, please tell us a little bit about who you are and let me know why and let everybody else know why self-care is so important when it comes to leadership. Thanks, Corey. I'm uh, Tony Thayer. I'm out of Berkeley, California, and I'm a leadership mentor who helps managers become leaders and really emphasize the human aspect of it. And what we're talking about today is a big part of the human aspect of both leadership and working in general. Everybody can get so tied up, so just into the moment of the pressure and getting things done and accomplishing something, being in their agenda, that they sort of lose that sense of the, the human aspect of why they're there, who they're with, what their relationships are, and whether it's fulfilling or not. And um, I think our topic today is simply about keeping that human dimension so that you're happy to be doing what you're doing, even if the particular thing you're doing this hour is stressful as hell because it means something. And you won't really know what it means until you get out of that, that pressure zone. So there's this sort of, it's like breathing and like heartbeats, just a contraction and expansion. We gotta keep some expansion in there with all the contraction. Awesome, gotta get that flow. I appreciate that. And we gotta have that ebb and flow. You gotta prepare for that down moments. We're human, we're all gonna have it. But how you manage and how you come back out of it is very important. Thank you for highlighting that. And TA, tell us a little bit about who you are and why self-care is so important to leadership. Sure. Uh, so I'm Terry Ann Richards. I hail from New Brunswick, Canada. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 18 years old. Uh, currently, I work with entrepreneurs in leaders, uh, what I like to call the inside out uh, method. So, you know, for you to be a leader or an entrepreneur, uh, you first have to be a human and a person first. Uh, and so many people, we go into the, the process of doing, you know, the building of the business. There's a lot of excitement that comes with that, especially when you're growing and you're scaling. Uh, but the reality is, is there's a reason why you decided to be a leader or an entrepreneur. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, freedom and having the ability to, you know, have autonomy and, and be flexible and have this wonderful life for your, your family. And what I've learned both by going through it myself and working with other entrepreneurs is that as you get going, those are the first things that we forget, right? We forget that there's an us, a me involved in this business, in this position. And we forget that the real reason behind what we're doing has a lot to do with what we want for our kids or our partner or our future. And so we forget to keep us in the business. And so a lot of what I do is around self-care and balance and life integration. And I think it's really important because I've seen the other side, right? Uh, over 12 years ago, I burnt out completely and ended up in the hospital for two and a half weeks during my busiest time in my business. I had no process. I had no basic foundations. I was a little bit of a micromanager back then. And for those two and a half weeks, everybody that worked within my world or within my family tried to pick up the pieces and keep it all running while I was trying to put myself to back together. It took me three months to recover. And I can tell you honestly that it had everything to do with not paying attention to the warning signs, but not keeping me, you know, the center of the business in the business, not taking care of myself. So I'm really excited about today and our topic. Awesome. Thank you. So yeah, when we're focusing so much on the future and on the thing that we're building, what we're moving towards, it can be easy to miss the present. And the present is we're in a fleshy meat suit right now that needs care. It needs to be given the right food and the right sleep and the right exercise so that we have the energy to show up and do the things, right? To have that foundation, as you mentioned. Oh, so yes. Awesome. Thank you. And Linda, please tell us a little about you and what is the most important role of self-care in leadership? Uh, I'm Linda Patton. I am the founder of Confluential and the Awaken the Leader program, 
Um, I truly believe that leaders can be effective and they can really see ma magnificent changes in the world if they have the right leadership to make it happen. For me, um, I'm an energizer bunny. Uh, Terry and I were talking about that. Uh, I tend to overbook my schedule to the point that I'll have eight to 10 Zoom calls in a day and then wonder why I'm exhausted at the end of the night. Uh, what I find is I don't necessarily take care of myself. I don't you know, sit in that hot bath and just read a book. I don't go out and take walks because that would just feel really, really good. My husband and I are trying to figure out what to do this weekend. And it, it, to be honest with you, with COVID, it's really challenging because he has a health condition right now that doesn't allow him to do a lot of walking. So what I wanna do is like walk Sonoma or go up to Healdsburg or go to the wineries or whatever. And that's not necessarily possible for him. So it's, it's how to really look at where is your life out of balance? I actually do an exercise with a circle and I have you look at what are all the pieces parts of your life? You know, there's religion and there's business and there's finance and there's family and all that. And what percentage of your life and where you're spending your time goes there? And on mine, the hugest one is my business. And then I look at the others and I go, no wonder I'm tired. No wonder I don't feel like I'm resting. And so mm -hmm. I know for me, um, like Terri Ann, I really don't want to go to the hospital and spend two weeks in the hospital recovering. So it's a piece that I have to consciously, and I do mean that literally, put myself into. Otherwise, I don't. I just be, go unconscious and do what I do. Totally. It, it's so easy because most of the time, I'm going to assume that as an entrepreneur, we love what we're doing. Right? We're bringing something awesome into the world, most likely to serve other people and make their lives better. That's exciting, right? It's really easy to get lost in that and just be in it. And at the same time, the self-care practices are vitally important. Uh, I could share from my own life, right? I, I just started a couple months ago, really clarifying what my daily practices are. Like, how am I caring for myself every day? Because I was getting to the end of the day and I was so tired that I didn't have any energy to do anything but lay on the couch and watch a movie. I'm like, well, that's fine. I also have a five-year-old son and I want to have the energy to spend with him. So I redid my, all of my habits, changed my whole lifestyle. And when I did, I felt much better. And as all of you three know, I dislocated my leg last Monday, right? And left it out for 36 hours because I live on a mountain in the jungle in Costa Rica and I didn't have a way to get to the hospital. So I saw a, I had it put back in. And the amazing thing was I am, it's Friday now, right? It's 10 days later. And I'm almost completely healed. And I attribute a lot of that because I have the foundation of self-care that allowed my body to just heal. You know, I was able to go into my business and go, okay, what is the one thing I can do today? I know I'm not feeling well. I also know the business needs to move forward. What's one thing I can do? And so I spent like four days doing one thing. By the end of the week, I had everything done and I was cared for. And now I'm healed. So based on that, I would love to hear from all of you about how to find self-care practices. Like, what is your process to really do that? Because I feel like all of our self-care practices are going to be a little different because we are all different, right? And so, Tia, I'd love to have you kick this one off. Sure. You know, I don't. I go back to when you were a kid, right? When you know the world was your oyster, and you got to really just choose the fun that you had in your life, right? I always start there with people. Like if you can just think back to when you were a kid and you had no bills to pay and, you know, you just got to choose, you know, what am I going to do today? What was it that you did? Did you call up your friends and go hang out? Did you get on your bicycle and, and go, you know, drive? And then I know there'll be some of those things what you did when you were a kid that you're like, well, that's not as exciting as an adult, but what were the aspects of that? Or what was the feeling that you got from it, right? So for me, it was like getting on my bicycle and driving for six hours with my friends. I don't entirely have time for all of that, but 
what did I like about it? Well, I liked the being active. I liked being outdoors and the wind hitting my face. So, you know, for me, self-care is getting out in nature, right? Like if you can put me around a tree and allow me to hug a bunch of big, big, big trees, I'm feeling good, right? That's my version of self-care. So I think if you can put yourself in the, in the mindset of, you know, like 12 year old you, and what would you do on a Saturday morning when, you know, you had no school, think that what was the feeling and go find the adult version of that and make that a priority in your every week. Awesome. Love it. Prioritize the inner child and the time to play with them. That is amazing. Simply yet profound. Thank you very much. And Linda, I'm curious what your process is. How do you find those self-care practices? Well, it's interesting, Carrie Ann, if I were, Terry Ann, if I were, we talked about this. Uh, if, I, if I were going back to when I was 12, I rode horses. And that still is the thing that gives me joy. Unfortunately, I don't own one anymore. And I don't, and I don't know a stable that I can go to and make that happen. But that being with animals is just a joy for me. I used to um, volunteer at Tony LaRusse's ARF, which is the Animal Rescue Foundation, and just sit in the cat room and play with the cats. It was just so much fun because they're, they're a hoot and a half to watch. They really get you to relax. You, you can read to them. You can even read your book to them. And it, it was just so much fun. But what I found uh, in the last year or so is that I'm putting my day between bookends and I have an opening ritual in the morning. Uh, the meditation that I do, perhaps reading a chapter out of a, a, a self-help book that I'm, I'm into right now um, and just setting the intentions for the day. And then at night, before I go to bed, I do sort of the same thing. I have a meditation that I do before I go to bed and I read a trashy novel um, but it, it's a way of me saying the day is done, the sun's gone, and it's now time for me. And so that's helped a whole lot. Um, I have a challenge with bathtubs these days and being able to get out of ours. For whatever reason, it's slippier than any bathtub I've ever had in the whole wide world. But I love a good hot bath with a glass of wine and a good book and bubbles. And that just really feels awesome to me. So um, I would love one of those Japanese walk-in tubs, but I'm in oh, yeah. and I can't do that. So we're working <laughs> on it. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I love how I love how these all come back to like, what did you do when you were a kid? What was the thing that brought you joy and lifted you up? And what's the adult version or not? Do yeah. the kid version. I've noticed having a five-year-old doing the kid version of the things that I have tried to mature. It's so much more fun as a kid. Like the kid version is more awesome and brings more joy and presence. Just fun fact. Yes. Tony, your turn. What, how, how do you find, how do you go about finding those self-care practices that are really meaningful and really help? Yeah, I'm, I'm old enough now that I've had lots of self-care practices and lots of, you know, going back to the things I loved as a kid. As a kid, I loved to run, but at some point my joints wouldn't support me running anymore. So, so then the challenge becomes like, how do you find something that's suitable as a replacement and gives you the same kind of high that what you used to rely on? And there were periods where I just, I wasn't getting that. And then, it, you know, I found I could bike and now I'm doing uh, these massive hikes. I live near the hills in, in Berkeley and okay. uh, just getting outside, feeling the breeze in your skin, uh, dealing with the weather and the changes of the weather. And you just start to feel like a, a creature again. And you're in this environment and you're part of that. And when I'm sitting at my desk and working on my computer, I forget all that. I just become kind of like a head, a disembodied head. But one thing that, uh, I often use to keep myself aware of whether I need some more self-care is something I read, uh, one of the vice presidents of Europe for Apple had this great thing he shared where he would wake up every morning and scale out with his hands, how much energy do I have for the day? And how much great. of that do I wanna block out from my family at the end of the day? And then, oh, that's he was, awesome. and then he would say like, okay, this is how much energy I have. And if he's on a low energy day, then he's just gonna have to like, parcel it out and not be, and I just thought that's such a, a sense of presence about like, what's my day about? And what, how much can I give? 
during the day. So he's not just in this automatic unconscious process of, of pushing or pulling or whatever he does with his people, but he's, he's accepting how it is this day and holding something for what he already wants with his family at the end of the day. And I realized as I would do that sometimes, I don't have much energy. And that's, that was at a period where I wasn't doing the exercise. And I realized when I do the exercise, I have more energy. It takes energy to get in shape. But once you're in shape, you've got a higher reserve of it. So that taught me, that exercise taught me like, oh, I'm not taking care of myself. Awesome. Thank you. I love the practical tip, right? Just get up in the morning and how much energy do I have? All right, maybe I'm here. Some days, maybe you're here. But at least you know that when you start the day, right? At least you know, all right, I have this much energy. How am I going to spend it, right? Because we're, we're not always paying with money, right? Like we're always paying with our attention and our energy, right? Attention is actually the most valuable commodity we all have. So keeping in mind, what is the first thing you focus on when you get up in the morning? You know, like Linda said, she's got a meditation. I'm sure TA has something that she does right away in the morning when she gets up. You know, Tony, you have that exercise. I get up and write down some gratitudes and then I have my own practices for that morning period as well. And one thing that I've noticed in my life, just we're all busy, right? Like as Linda said, eight to 10 Zoom calls a day. Mm. TA, I know you've had some really long nights in the last week or two. And, and Tony, like you have a lot going on too. One thing I realized is uh, I neglected practices simply because I didn't have time until I decided, well, I don't have to work out for an hour. One, I don't like it. And two, it's not necessary. So what I found is if I can take a 10, 15, 20 minute practice and do a bunch of them throughout the day, I feel good all day. And then I can check in and I have a set of practices to look at what is the thing I need right now? Do I need to address the body? Do I need to address the mind? Do I need to address the emotions? What is going on in my three minds that needs to be harmonized? So I have the energy to do the next thing. And for you three, I'm curious what you found with self-care practices and time as well. So I know you've all got a lot going on. We have many aspects of our businesses. So how do you make sure that you have the time daily for self-care? And Tony, we'll start with you this time. Um, I'm not quite sure how I know, but uh, because I, I give myself the flexibility where there might be three days in a row where I basically put the self-care aside because I'm either... Uh, under such pressure or so excited about the momentum that I'm, I'm creating that I just want to get something done. And then, then I'll take a, like a day off, just like really take it easy and sort of refine myself. But yeah, I do something very much like what you're saying, Corey. I, I used to try and, and exercise for a couple hours a day and there would be days where I didn't feel like I could make that break. So I've, I've added exercise routines that are basically, uh, 10 to 15 minutes and I can do that when I take off for lunch before I go back to work. It's just, it's just, and it's, it's sort of like this mobility of moving around the different parts of your life to sort of remind yourself that there's more to it than just work. Right. So important for all of us business owners to remember that there is so much more to life than work. In fact, I'd be willing to bet as TA and Linda and Tony all three pointed out, you started your business because you wanted a better life. You didn't start your business because you wanted to work more. It inevitably happens. Yeah. I digress. TA, where or how do you make sure that you have that time for self-care every day? Or is it daily? Is it a different rhythm like Tony's mentioning? You know what? I put the mask on yourself first, right? So I schedule me first. Before anybody comes into my world, before I say yes to anything, I'm already time blocked in there because I am the most important person in my world, right? Like next to God, then there's me, right? Because if there's no me, there's no me for my kids. There's no me for, you know, if I had a partner, there's no me in business. There's no me showing up for you guys, right? So I have to do that for me. And like I said, I learned that the hard way. I was not always like this, right? Like, uh, I, I wouldn't call myself a people pleaser, but I definitely do enjoy serving. And I am a little bit of a yes girl because I do have lots of skill sets. And so I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. But every once in a while I have to pull myself back, right? And say, well, no, no, you can't do that. Because if you do that, you're going to miss your yoga class. And the yoga class is a non-negotiable for me, right? So, so I think over time, I've developed practices that are, you know, considered non-negotiables. They are just things that have to happen. And kind of to Tony's point, like 
a workout is a workout is a workout. If it's a 10 minute workout or a one hour workout, it's a workout. And if that is the, you know, if the intention is just to get your body moving, get your blood pumping and to give yourself some space and time to kind of hit reset, then that's what you have to commit to. So we all have that thing that we need to do. That is what our version of self-care is. I would say the challenge is block it at first. That should be in your calendar on a go forward basis first, whether it's at noon or six o'clock at night, whenever you're at your, you know, peak performance to get it done and then book everything else around it. And there will be people that are be like, I have the million dollar idea and it happens at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And I'm like, can't do it. I'm in yoga, right? The yep. million dollar idea will be there at 10. I'm going to yep. have to have a conversation. And people for the most part are like, okay, cool. We can make mm -hmm. that work, right? So um, yeah, that's how I make it happen. I block it first. I love it. Me too. I mean, my, my morning, my family knows until I finish those morning practices, don't talk to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this to reset myself so that I know I'm going to show up the way I want to, right? Vitally important, right? Something that we miss a lot of the time, but vitally important. And Linda, how do you make sure you get your practices in every day with your eight to 10 Zoom calls? <laughs> well, I, I do know that the bookends always happen. So that's, that's a gimmick. Okay. I, mean, I don't get out of bed till I finish the first one and I don't turn out the light until I finish the second. So those are okay. non-negotiable. During the day, it's it's really a challenge for me because like Terry Ann, I and Tony for that matter, I I tend to want to serve my clients. And so I will literally book back to back Zoom calls, which after I do it, I go, Linda, why did you do that? You know that it's not serving <laughs> you, it's serving them. And so I and, oh, and my scheduler does it for me as well. So if I book, you know, like half hours, it'll keep booking them if there's an open space. It's like, okay, we need to do bumpers on either side of those appointments just so that it doesn't happen. Um, and, and that's, I guess that's a challenge for me. I would also love a standing desk or at least a desk that I could mm -hmm. do both because I do spend yep. a great deal of time sitting in this wonderful purple chair. Um, my husband, though, I have to say is my saving grace because he has IT challenges on a fairly regular basis, which forces me to get up, to walk to his office and to do something different, to be in a different space and to do something different and then to come back. And it breaks up my day. Sometimes not that I wanted to, but it, it does. And I find that I'm better mm -hmm. for it that I'm more relaxed at the end of the night. I'm not as tired. I'm not as physically drained. Um, and a lot of the exercise and stuff ends up happening on the weekends rather than during the week. So, uh, which doesn't necessarily serve the body, but it is what I've got. Right. Well, the important part of what all three of you have said is you find your rhythm. You find the rhythm that works. It may be, you know what, I'm really in it for a few days and then I take a day off. And then I'm in it for another few days, I take a day off. But if it works and you're filled up and you're able to really be present, that's awesome. You know, but as you know, I want to speak to what you were saying too, Linda, about booking calls and booking multiple people in a row. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed inevitably happens for us is at a certain point in the day, I've experienced where I resent the fact that I have the call because I haven't been able to eat or I haven't been able to do this or get a break or that. And that almost always comes through with the person and all of us are service oriented. And I'm, I would be willing to put money on this bet that nobody wants to show up in a way where it makes the other person feel weird or feel like they're being resented or feel like something's off. Right. So that self care and that coming back to center is really important before we serve somebody else. Like TA said, put your mask on first. If you're not resourced, you're not gonna serve the person well. If you're feeling resentful because you know, you're, you've been sitting in the same chair for four hours, that's gonna come through too. So gotta make sure we get ourselves right first, find that rhythm, find the practices we love and make time for them. Now, when it comes to time, we're going to dive into that a little more deeply next week. So if some of you are saying they're going, well, I don't know how to schedule that because I don't have enough time. A, I call bullshit. And B, 
you'll find out why next week. So before we close up today, curious if the three of you have any parting thoughts that you would like to share about self-care to leave our audience with today. Linda, will you please kick us off? Any parting thoughts? Uh, there was something that you said about not being of service to your clients as you go further and further in the day and actually resenting the fact that they scheduled it, you know, two, three, four, five o'clock at night. Uh, I, I so agree with that because we are the example for our clients. If we're not doing this stuff, if we're not taking care of ourselves, if we're not finding balance in our own lives, how can we expect to teach them how to do that and to expect them to demonstrate it for us? So I, you know, they say, you know, physician heal thyself. And that's what I, I firmly believe at, with self-care and balance is that we have to be there first. We have to walk the walk and talk the talk. Otherwise we're a phony and that's not what, that's not in service to our clients. No, no, be real. Thank you. Take nothing else away from today. Be real with where you're at. <laughs> yes. Yeah, TA, any parting thoughts you want to share about self-care before we wrap up today? Yeah, I, I think you just got to remember why you're doing it, right? Like, why are you in the position that you're in? Um, what's that full life picture that you're looking for? You know, I know life balance, we throw it around. It's obviously the topic that we're talking about. But the reality is there's no real such thing as actual life balance. It's more like a triage. It's like a hospital. And you're trying to figure out what's the most, you know, what's the most important, you know, thing at that moment. But the only way that you can really make that decision is if you look at it from a fully integrated perspective, right? Like, here's me. Mm -hmm. Here's my personal life. And that, you know, encompasses friends, family, spouses, children. Uh, and then here's the business. And, and what's the actual life goal? Like, you know, the painted picture that I actually want of the why I'm doing this. And when you have that picture, it does become a little bit easier to then go, okay, well, you know, I need to be healthy because the business doesn't exist if you're not healthy, right? And so what is healthy to me, right? I'm not talking about weight loss and things like that. I'm talking about like, what's healthy to you? You know, healthy to me is drinking a certain amount of water every day, eating a pretty clean diet and staying active throughout the week, right? So you got to mm -hmm. get that version because again, if you're not taking care of you, there is no you in your business and there is no you for your family. And if you have the full picture of why you're doing this, you're going to realize really quick that you're at the center of it. So you better take care of you. Love that. You're in the middle, take care of the center. Otherwise everything else falls apart. So Tony, any parting thoughts that you have to share with the audience about self-care before we wrap today? Yeah, uh, yeah, just sort of playing off of what Linda was saying about her IT challenged husband and, and how it, it interrupts her day and, and loosens it up. And I realized, um, you know, there, were, there was a time where I didn't do the self-care and I was very compulsive about working hard. There's so much of our, our identity tied up in what we accomplish. And I imagine that some of our listeners today might find themselves a little skeptical about the need for self-care. And I think we've all been through times in our lives where it's been like that. So I'd like to leave off with a, like a metaphor. To me, self-care is kind of like the yeast that you use to leaven bread. To use yeast, you incorporate it into the flour, you roll it and you let it rest. And then you come back and you work it again and you let it rest. And I think that's really what we're saying is that to leaven our lives and to make a finer loaf of bread, we need to take some rest and then work it and then rest it and work it. Brilliantly said. Thank you, Tony. Right. So we've been talking about self-care today because if we're not taking care of us, we can't take care of anybody else. And that would be a tragedy because I know we're all here to make a big difference and to help a lot of people. So take care of yourself. Find out why you're doing what you're doing. Figure out what you like to do that actually fills you up and has you feel cared for and schedule that time as often as possible. Find the rhythm for you. It may be every couple of days. If you're like me, it may be multiple times a day. Find what it is for you and commit to it because your commitment is going to make all the difference in the world. Next week, we're going to drop in and talk about time. So for any of you skeptical about, well, I just don't have time for that. Let's help you find it. With that, Thank you, Linda and TA and Tony for being here today. It is always my pleasure to interview the three of you and see what you have to say. And I look forward to doing this again with you next week.
Thank you, Corey.